Wait a minute. Ho, ho, ho. Slow down. We can't start episode number four without saying a week and a half ago, give or take a few days, Apple released new iPods. Now, there's two reasons why they has not made it onto the Talking Map podcast yet. First, because it's not Mac. And second, because of the way we record these shows. Sometimes, one, the two weeks ahead of time before the airing date. All right. Now that all hearts and minds are clear, let's fill it up with Macintosh on the Talking Mac podcast. Stay tuned. Coming up on the Talking Mac podcast, we're talking about Mac OS 10.5 Leopard, the next release of the Mac OS 10 operating system. Welcome back to the Talking Mac Podcast. We're always talking Mac right here on the Talking Mac Podcast. Remember, email us, talkingmac at gmail.com, or go to our website, talkingmac.ck, which includes our blog with all of our show notes that we talked about. You can ar- our archives where you can download these podcasts in MP3 format, and many, many, many more. And right on that webpage, you'll find our most recent, our most recent podcast. We do these every single week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash talkingmac. That way you get automatically email notified that a podcast that is new has arrived and you need to listen to it because we're always talking Mac. Alright, today's subject, as you probably heard, we were talking about Mac OS 10.5 version Leopard. As if you don't know, Mac OS 10.5 version Leopard is the name of the upcoming sixth major release of the Mac OS 10 operating system for Apple's Mac line of computers. Scheduled to be the successor of Mac OS 10 version 10.4 Tiger. It was first shown at for two developers for the first time at 2006 WWDC Worldwide Developers Conference. It is currently available to Apple Developer Connection subscribers for beta testing. And the feature complete beta, beta version was distributed to developers at the 2007 WWDC. The final release is slated for October 2007 and will sell for $129.89 pounds. Hello, the Talking Mac Podcast. Hi, yeah, I was wondering, can I download your Talking Mac Podcast? I want them on my iPod, they're so great, so, can I download them? Well, sure you can, it's easy, just visit the Talking Mac archives page at www.talkingmac.tk and download our podcast in MP3 formats today. Alright. So, the first thing, we're going to go over about four or five different things today. The first thing they changed, in in the new build, this build was released last month, Build Leopard Build 9A527 has a new finder, uh, and they replaced the background with this futuristic sort of space thing with pink on the top half. I don't know, do a Wikipedia search on Mac OS 10.5 Leopard or Mac OS 10 Leopard. All right. Here's some of the system requirements that you'll need. A PowerPC G4, 800 megahertz or faster. PowerPC G5 or Intel Mac, a DVD drive, 512 RAM, megabytes of RAM, of course. 7 gigabytes of hard drive space and 12 gigabytes if Xcode is also installed. The latest firmware and FireWire ports. I'm going to go over a few features. Time Machine. Time Machine is an amazing feature. Time Machine is great. Time Machine is a backup uh, backup utility developed by Apple, which which will be uh, included in their operating system, Mac OS 10.5 Leopard, right? So basically, what Time Machine does, it 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 backs up y- applications. You can back up between applications like address book, iPhoto, and Mail, etc. But it, it's just a personal backup utility that backs up your hard drive. So what you need is an external hard drive or another hard drive. Uh, in which you can back up your system to make sure that you have enough space so if I can get the 320 gig you'll need a 320 gig or more you will need that and there is a preference in the system preferences pane that says you can turn time machine on or you can turn time machine off so if you don't have an external hard drive turn it off now there is some similar functionalities in other operating systems uh, Windows Vista's 
Windows Vista and Windows Server 2003 comes with a uh, application of called Shadow Copy. Yeah, Shadow Copy. Uh, it creates snapshots of a file and folder on a specific volume at a specific point in time that can later be retrieved. Both Time Machine and Shadow Copy use snapshots to achieve a similar purpose. However, there is a major difference in the way in which Time Machine has been implemented. The main utility of Windows Vista's previous versions is its backup and restore center. Now, this is about Mac, so I'm not going to go any further. Just to say there are a little bit of similarities, probably because... Well, I can't say that. That's not right. But a lot of things Windows did copy from Mac OS 10, correct? Am I correct? Okay. So, they're both about on the same level with this. But Time Machine takes it to a whole other level. And, of course, the amazing graphics. You have got to see this. Do a Wikipedia or Google search on Time Machine. And you'll see it. Or go to the Apple website. It's really amazing. All right, let's move on. Spend too much time there. There's Front Row. Front Row, of course has gotten a redesign in Mac OS 10 Little Leopard. Uh, front row usually has a DVD, a CD with a, iTunes, with a little iTunes logo, iPhoto and iMovie, uh, I'm sorry, iDVD logo, where you can watch DVDs and play CDs and watch videos from your hard drive and look at photos in a slideshow, okay? So it, usually, it was like in a circle and you could use your front row remote to jog around, right? And it's gotten a major redesign and will look like the Apple TV because Apple TV uses a version of Front Row Remote that also uses the Apple Remote and that version will be put into Mac OS X Leopard. So the way your, your Apple TV looks, the user interface, the way that the design implementation is the way it will look in Mac OS X Leopard. Isn't that great? So about spaces. Spaces are is a virtual implementation uh, uh, of different, let me let me say that again. Spaces enables users to set up virtual desktops suited to particular needs of the user, without the need of creating a new account. One could, for example, create a space primarily primarily designed to office work, and then switch to a different one focused for web surfing. Up to 16 spaces can be created, and applications can be bound to each specific space. So just watch this. You're in the office, right? You have Mac OS X Leopard. Boss comes by, you switch it to you switch your space to the work one. Boss walks by, it's gone, and guess what? We're back to watching videos. Uh-huh. So you can switch spaces with different applications in each space. So that is spaces and boot camp will be included uh in Mac OS 10 Leopard. It will be baked into the operating system. Uh, and it assists in the installation of Windows XP and Windows Vista. It will be out of beta when it is released with Leopard. Dashboard includes uh, enhancements such as Web Clip, which allows you to take, turn any part of a web page into a live dashboard widget that can re, uh, stay up to date anytime the information changes. It will change. It's just a widget. And one more last feature before we say goodbye is Back to My Mac, a new feature for .Mac users that allow users to access files on their home computer while away from home via the internet. Those are a few of 300 new features in Mac OS X Leopard. We talked about Boot Camp. Next week, we'll be talking about Boot Camp and about Boot Camp expiring and all that other stuff. So if you have any questions, send us an email, talkingmac at gmail.com or go to our website, talkingmac.tk for our archives, blogs, show notes, all of that great stuff where you can download these podcasts and put them on your MP3 player and all that great stuff. All right. So, as we near to the release of Mac OS X Leopard, let's, let's brace ourselves because it's going to be great and let's hope we can all get it installed and running. Enjoy your day. Thanks for listening to Talking, the Talking Mac podcast. Remember, come back next week. Oh, yeah, I, this is one cool feature about our website, TalkingMac.tk. It's say this week's episode near the bottom. That's the episode. Just click play. That's just this week's episode. Every Monday, it will be up there and ready for you to watch. Brand new. TalkingMac.tk. Goodbye. We'll see you next week.